confesses not only to killing his business partner, caught on video. Taper, referee, viciously attacked over a call. We're going to get you in the loop at the top of the hour. Chris? Thank you. Money is tight. Families are struggling. The economy might be stuck in neutral for a while. And the new numbers out today show hourly earnings are dropping. And people are now unemployed for about 40 weeks. Is it leading to a kind of class warfare? Well, a New York Times editorial examines the new resentment of the poor, a growing attitude that the poor are not contributing their fair share. Managing editor of thegrio.com, Joanne Reed joins me, and senior advisor for the New Democrat Network, Alicia Menendez. Uh, good morning to both of you. Joanne, do you think what's going on now is morning. breeding a kind of uh, resentment among the classes? You know what, um, Chris, I think that any time that you have a recession, it does create interclass kind of warfare and resentment because you have people in the middle who feel that, well, people who are poorer than me can get government benefits that I can't, and people who are richer than me don't want to pay taxes and don't want to participate. And I think you're seeing a little bit of both in this economy. People want the rich to pay more taxes, but you have this sort of Tea Party ethos that says, well, we don't want to give the poor anything more. There's a moral hazard in giving them any help. We need to make them pay more. We need to broaden the tax base. So I think you have a Bit of both. Yeah, and it's something that's being picked up on the campaign trail. Take a listen to what Michelle Bachman had to say. Part of the problem is today only 53% of Americans pay any federal income tax at all. 47% pay nothing. We need to broaden the base so that everybody pays something, even if it's a dollar. Everyone should pay something because we all benefit. What she doesn't tell you in that argument, Alicia, is that according to the Times, 90% of those non-taxpayers are families making under 40 grand. I mean, are we so angry and frustrated that we want to go after the working poor now? We're not, but apparently members of the GOP are. I mean, what kind of bully picks a fight with the most vulnerable Americans and builds an argument on things that are not true? I mean, the poor, even if they are not paying income taxes, are paying sales taxes. They're paying payroll taxes on the little that they're making. If anything, our tax system is skewed towards the wealthy because of the way we tax investment income and regular income differently. It's why you have Warren Buffett saying it's absurd that he gets taxed at a lower rate than his secretary. I don't think these are real feelings, Chris. I think they're feelings that are being <laughs> stirred up by members of the GOP. And Joanne, you know, we do talk about the very rich and we talk about the poor, but there seem to be a lot, and I mean a growing number, it seems to me, of middle class working Americans who are looking around saying, well, where does all this leave me? Right. Well, you know what? I think people forget sort of the history of even where the Tea Party started. I mean, the TARP bailout of the Wall Street banks angered pretty much Americans across the board. But the reaction to that really came from within Wall Street. Tea Party really started out as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange traders backlashing against just the possibility that the Obama administration would help underwater homeowners who were then called deadbeats. So you have this sort of Tea Party that is sort of comes across as populist, but it really is very, very wealthy people like the Koch brothers trying to shield the wealthy from having to pay more taxes and making this argument proactively that, wait, the real problem is the poor. They're the ones who aren't paying. And do we have a problem here? I mean, as we go into this debate, Alicia, and I'm not saying that you can't be rich and understand the problems of the poor, but from the outside, a lot of people looking in say, look at the numbers of millionaires in the Senate. Look at the numbers of millionaires in Congress. They tend to live these isolated lives in Washington, D.C., and then maybe trips to their home district, C can there really be a profound understanding of the suffering out there? Is it unfair to question that? No, I think that's actually a very legitimate question. I think especially when you look at the number of millionaires who are on this new super committee, of course there's a question about empathy. I mean, I think you hope that at the end of the day, these people understand that their job is to represent the people of their state, of their districts, and that the majority of those people are middle class Americans who've been struggling for the last 11 years, who don't want finger pointing and blame, but want a plan that actually shows us how America is going to move forward. And right now, 
Barack Obama is the only one who's stepping up and offering something. We're going to see what this jobs plan looks like. I think Republicans would do well to stop with the finger pointing and actually put something on the table um, that shows how America is going to move forward. Alicia Menendez, Joanne Reed. Good to talk to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.